I'm Scott Al Miller. It is the 8th of April, 2023. This is my vlog of daily life. Living in Leon, Nicaragua, it is the weekend of Semana Santa, and I'm doing my best to avoid going out to the beach and dealing with the mayhem there. So I'm going for a little walk in the country today. We have some new stuff to explore together. I'll see you after the bump. Happy Saturday, everybody. It is a pretty nice morning. It's warm, but it's not terrible, but we're heading up to 97 degrees today. And today is the massive day of crowds out on the beach. So while it'd be interesting to go out there and film, and I hope that something happens that I end up going out there to do so, it's a lot of work and a lot of stress, and overall I'm gonna to try to avoid it because it's just not worth it. But uh, I am going for a walk this morning because I'm way behind on videos, and today I'm working very hard to do catch up on them. And so I went out to try to find a nice spot to do uh, some back recording uh, for you guys to catch up, and I discovered, well, I found a path that I knew about, and I said, you know what, I'm just gonna walk down there because I think I see some pastures where it'd be nice to film. And if you remember an episode, uh, maybe two months ago, I climbed Cerro de Oro, the, the very, very small uh, dormant volcano near where I live, but it was this huge undertaking and I couldn't really go up the mountain. I got pretty high, but I couldn't go all the way up because it was, it was blocked. But part of the problem with that trip is that uh, Google Maps sent me out looking for this bridge and I have this whole thing, like watch that episode and you can see that like I, I never find the bridge and Google Maps sends me to the wrong spot and all that, it was very like upsetting and there's this river by where I live. So I did some exploring today and I managed to get down to the river and it's actually quite pleasant. It's a nice spot to come down and walk. So I'm hoping to be able to do more um, along the river and do more discovery with that uh, in future episodes and, and everything. Um, and finding these little country byways is part of the fun of living anywhere, right? But living in Nicaragua especially, because they're so remote and yet there's so much life everywhere. As I'm walking to the super remote location, a kid on a bicycle comes by, I'm like, what? I'm in the middle of nowhere, right? But it's beautiful, just be absolutely gorgeous. And there's this beautiful breeze and the sunlight is gorgeous. And just, this is such a beautiful spot. I'm really enjoying this. But as I come down here, I get to the water and all of a sudden I realize I've discovered the bridge that was missing on uh, from Google Maps. It's a completely different spot than where Google Maps said it was. Now, I don't know what's on the other side of the bridge. I've literally not gone over it yet. I'm saving going over the bridge to do with you guys in real time. But that's what I discovered this morning. So that's what I'm doing for Semana Santa. This was not my plan for today at all. I came down here to film some other things and now we've discovered this. So we're going on a little journey of discovery together. And I see that there's a house on the other side of the bridge, which is where this kid, this kid went over the bridge. So we're gonna go see what's going on because this is really interesting. Okay, this is the river here out in Western Sutiava, and here's a pretty substantial bridge going over it. This is not, as I suspected, just some footbridge thrown together by locals. This is like an actual bridge that the government has put here, but to the best of my knowledge, we're not like on a road or anything. This is just like a dirt path going to someone's house. So I have no idea what's going on here. It's very, very interesting. I mean, obviously this is an old, Scary, okay, I'm very scared walking across this. I mean, it's, it's concrete and metal, but the edges are bamboo and rickety definitely describes it. And it comes down directly into a farm. So this may be all private property over here, but that doesn't make a whole lot of sense given that there's this huge bridge for it. But we've got these beautiful fields over here. This is gorgeous. And uh, I don't think I'm gonna do a lot of exploring right now because I wanna come back. I don't have my phone with me. I didn't intend to come down here. And so I don't have a map that shows me where I am or where I'm going. And so if I wander too much, um, I, I really wanna know if I'm close to a road and like about to show up on an actual location or if I'm just stumbling through someone's private property. So I wanna be careful about that. Um, cause this is, this is really weird out here, but Google does show this bridge on the maps. Oh, we got a nice shot here. So I expect we're going to be able to come down and do some exploring and, uh, hopefully 
have a shortcut path that makes the whole area near Cerro Oro, uh, Cerro de Oro, uh, accessible because there's a whole like country walking area out there that should be interesting and that more that we could explore. Um, and uh, but getting there is such a problem. So that's that's a consistent problem when exploring here in Nicaragua is uh, that the number of roads. So if you're in the United States, the number of roads places is it's kind of like a matrix. Like there's just a grid, and you can more or less get anywhere from anywhere. And life is simple but uh, here in Nicaragua there's a lot of places that don't have roads so you'll have really large areas where no road goes directly there um, no road crosses a zone and so it's easy to end up living or starting from or being in a spot where you want to get somewhere that's not physically that far away but discover that you have to go miles out of the way to get there uh, simply because there's not that much population there aren't that many roads leading to different places and that creates quite a bit of complication as far as uh, navigating in many cases so that's something that's difficult finding something like this could open up an entire uh, area to explore simply by um, allowing me to, to traverse an area that otherwise uh, would be would be lost to me all right, Paul and I are actually heading out to the beach today. I know I said that I didn't think I was going to go, but we're running out just to deal with some stuff, so it's quick errands. So I'm bringing you guys along as we run out. I'm going to see if I can get some amount of video of what's going on on the beach, because there should be loads of people, huge party. Uh, this, was, this has started yesterday. I mean, it's been going on for several days, but yesterday, today, and tomorrow are the epic parties on the beach, so should be fun. See you there. We're, uh, it's a slow go down on the highway because there's police checkpoints. They're not really stopping people, but they've got roadblocks and they make everyone funnel through uh, some speed bumps and stuff to slow people down and make sure, you know, that there isn't, uh, isn't drunk drivers or whatever. Right now, it's mostly just getting ready on the way back from the beach. They'll check all the cars tonight to make sure people are safe because there's a lot of people who come down from Managua and have a long drive home yet. All right. I am just going to narrate our drive through Las Penitas. So if you that's all you want to see feel free to stop watching here but if you want to see what Samana Santa looks like on the beach we are heading towards the beach here on Nicaragua 14 which you've seen on other videos I've done before Paul's driving I'm just holding the camera uh, for a little bit of the road and you're going to get to see a whole bunch of the beach and it is true that Samana Santa everything transforms so if you've watched any of my videos where I film at Las Penitas here we are. This is uh, just before the Malacone, which we did a video. Um, so the Malacone is off to the right here. Uh, just maybe two weeks ago, as they were getting the Malacone ready, you can see the police here. Every so often, you're going to see police along the road. They're just keeping a watch over everything. Here at the head of the beach, they convert the road to one way. So as you come into the town on Nicaragua 14, you keep going into this into the, the beach. Uh, if you decide to turn around or you eventually you have to leave, uh, they actually uh, send you down through the village, which we'll show in a little while where that, that turnoff is. So the majority of the beach becomes one way heading southbound, which is the way we're facing here. So we're still, we're not quite up to the Malacone. This is the giant parking that is happening at the very head of the beach, um, just just before the Malacone. Like you can see the sign, uh, the white square sign is the head of the Malacone, uh, just a tiny bit in front of us and we'll be there in a second. Now, normally this part of the beach is completely empty. These parking lots on the left are not open 360 days of the year, maybe, maybe not quite. That if you make 350, they are almost always just closed and empty. There's nothing. This whole area, absolutely devoid of tourists. But coming up on the right is uh, Restaurant Bertha. Uh, they're not very busy most of the year. They are famous as a seafood restaurant. Um, I have not been there, believe it or not, uh, after a couple of years of living here. But locals tell me that this is some of the best seafood around, home cooking, uh, really nice little place. There you can see the sign really well on the right. Um, and remember, all this stuff on the left should be empty, completely empty. Every single thing you see is just here for three or four days during Semana Santa. It all pops up, it is busy as can be, and then it goes away. So the big Rancho sign there, this is, you turn to the right, that is the Malacone right there, and that Rancho restaurant is down on the Malacone. And all these little food stands, none of this is normal. This is all, and the entire thing on the left, and you're going to see pop up on the right as well. This is all an, an entire uh, stadium and concert arena. It is all erected just for Samana Santa. They do Friday, Saturday, Sunday events. Um, I'm going to show just the tiniest bit of it there. 
This is the Hotel Nile. Um, and then this is empty lots on the right that get turned into this giant event center. Every year they do exactly the same thing. They bring in this huge front wall. They put in a giant stage in the back. Some of the biggest bands in the country come in and play. Uh, tickets range. The cheapest tickets are $43. Remember, this is Nicaragua where minimum wage is $200 a month. So that is one-fifth or more of a minimum wage monthly salary for a single entry ticket. This is the ticket booth, the bullet area on the right. And um, and the the top tickets that I've seen being sold are about seventy five dollars, and I've heard a rumor that some of the tickets are are into like the hundred and fifty dollar range. This is a crazy expensive event. Um, in the U.S., this would be expensive, but here in Nicaragua, it is outrageous. But it's the biggest thing of the year. There's more police on the right. They're just keeping an eye, keeping the road down to one lane, making sure that traffic doesn't stop. Because if they're not there, cars will just pull over and stop, and it will be a mess. Some of these uh, hotels along here, this is the really slow zone. So they're all closed much of the year. Um, one of the biggest ones there, we've only seen it open maybe... 10 to 12 days a year they're in terrible shape we noticed new for sale signs popping up uh this year of course everyone if you're going to sell you you get your signs up for samana santa that's the polish restaurant on the left um this is the time you get the word out that you're for sale so if you're going to be for sale you get you get those signs out and if you're going to be open you are open for this weekend so anything that we've not seen open for this weekend, we assume is going to be closed for a minimum of six more months and pr probably longer, right? Things are still going out of business. It, this is the university on the right, by the way. And on the left, this is what we call the shrimp farm. It is an enormous industry for Nicaragua. Uh, and now this is, these are restaurants uh, there on the left and a few hotels on the right. Very, very small, very sleepy part of the beach. Even now on Samana Santa, you can see there's there's little pockets of people. There's some people walking because they're staying in this slower zone and walking to where the big party is. But there's the main beach main party uh, down at Playa Roca and Simple Beach. And then there's the pop-up uh, national party where they take the empty lots that we already passed and they throw up uh, these new constructions just for Samana Santa. Uh, but that's about it. There's the two big zones. And then this area in the middle remains really sleepy. A lot of these are private houses. They're not, you know, they'll, they'll get busy. People will throw private parties, but they're not open for all of these, these uh, out-of-town guests. So most of the beach, even on the busiest days of the year, not too busy through here, but you can see there's there's a consistent people walking down the sidewalk. Um, this area on the left, normally that's closed, opens for parking uh, for this. Uh, and we're coming up on the first of the real uh, hotels here on the right. Uh, that is Bomaloo. They're they're a pretty busy uh, uh, hotel and restaurant in general, but then more houses along here. And we're going to come up in just a minute, uh, this tall building on the left that you can see already, this one's a bit of a surprise. This is the largest venue in Las Penitas, and it has always op opened up for Samana Santa, if nothing else. When we first came to the beach, it was still open. It's now been closed for a couple of years, but importantly, this year they did not open for Samana Santa. This is the public beach on the right. I'm just showing all of this is just pop-up temporary space it'll all go right away again and uh this is a friends of ours house right there and continuing on down the beach so this giant venue never have we seen it not open for samana santa before and this year they kept it closed so it is done it has no hope of reopening at this point. Um, I did sneak through its complex recently, and it is in terrible disrepair. Obviously, the front portion is good enough shape. You should be able to reopen it, um, but uh, the majority of the property is destroyed. It is so much, and it, and it was just being finished um, before they shut it down. So it was a lot of new and just barely or just about finished work and now it's an entire hotel that needs to be torn down and rebuilt it's in it's in terrible shape it's really really sad um and just crazy to think that the biggest venue in town isn't worth getting a temporary license for the weekend and getting it open um anymore even with the big crowds they just think they, they can't put on the show so we have no idea what's happened there 
Um, but that was that was a big surprise for us because we do pay attention to who opens, who closes, um, and sadly, it is consistently still after all these years. We're still seeing more and more businesses go out of business. We're not seeing every so often we see one turn over, but we don't see any new ones um, outside of just little tiny food stalls. This is the uh, one of the left turns where the traffic will come back in. Uh, where traffic was heading out of town is up by where I said the shrimp farm was. Some restaurants here on the left, Mono Loco, another one. It closed a few months ago and no one bothered to get it open for Samana Santa. So that's just awful. Playa Roca here on the right. And that means coming up right here, this is the Simple Beach Lodge. This is our hotel. So we're going to park here. We're actually going to drive in and then I'm going to walk you through so you can see what it looks like. Now, this is the middle of the day, so this is the slowest part of the day, um, but it's still, it's pretty good. <laughs> this is quite the curb. I can't believe Paul drove over this curb. We bottomed out the car. I'm like, ah, <laughs> it was bad. All right, so this is the hotel, and uh, it's uh, uh, good and busy. Um, I'm hoping that the noise is not too bad uh, for this, and uh, you can see we got a lot of tables going on. It is a good crowd for Samana Santa. It is always really neat to see um, how many people come out and uh, everybody's enjoying the hotel. This is now, we're, we're kind of going through a weird branding um, and we're trying to find out what, like, what we're supposed to do. It's, it's the Simple Beach Lodge is the name of the complex and the restaurant is Pirate's Point. Of course, Tonya put up Parata Point, which is Spanglish. We don't know why they did that. They did that to several of the businesses where they put up these weird Spanglish signs. It's Pirate's Point in English. If you want to call it in Spanish, that's okay. But then it would be uh, uh, Punto Paratas. Not, not, it's just weird mixing the languages together. This is not the busiest time of day. I'm surprised by how few people are actually in the water. Uh, typically, I think we see more people out swimming. Um, but this is a pretty hot part of the day. Uh, uh, but the restaurants are, are, are quite busy. But we were really happy with how well our place did. Because um, you just never know, right, um, how it's going to be and, and how busy it's going to be um, every year. So this was, this was really good. Uh, a lot of people came out. People seemed to be really enjoying themselves. Our numbers from uh, the hotel and restaurant were really good. And you can see all of our new artwork there at the at the outside. Um, I'm going to try. I think I'm going to make it through and show the other side. This is the main restaurant, and this is the hotel portion. We now have pool table in there. You can see we put in um, like a bar. We've changed it up a little bit, and the new murals that are in there. So this portion is what the restaurant was when we first took it over. It was only this section. So you, we're more than twice as big now. This is the new section again. Uh, there you can see our hotel managers working at the bar, checking things out. The hammocks are surprisingly popular. Coming from America, you would never guess that hammocks would get so much traffic. And then Paul and I left, so this is us going south again from the hotel. Uh, this is Suyapa on the right, which traditionally was the biggest, uh, busiest hotel in town, and now is just, it's for sale, not doing well at all. Um, horrible repair is what we've heard, uh, or, or needs a ton of repair. Uh, and, and so basically no one's willing to buy it because there's so much work to be done um, is, is what we hear, right? We're, we're not looking to buy it, so we haven't been touring it specifically. But this area gets a lot of traffic because this is uh, starting with Playa Roca and heading down. This is the busiest part of the beach because you've got our really busy hotels and bars all grouped together on what we call the corner. And then Sua is the busiest of the standalone restaurants in town. So a lot of cars pull up along the side and that's their parking on the left. Huge restaurant, great food, packed, really good service. That's a place to check out. You can see there's quite a few cars there. Parking there is tough though. These then are private houses. And then there's, as you go forward down the beach, um, there is a bit of new bars and little tiny restaurants that have, that have opened up in front of us. We're not going to go all the way down there. You can make it down to Barca de Oro. Um, there's a few things that are that are pretty busy down there. Uh, but this kind of up to this turn is where everybody wants to be because it's the stretch that every car is coming through. Everyone's there. Uh, but this is the turnaround to head back. So you can kind of work our way through town. So this is weird that these roads get zero cars for the entire year. And then just for Semana Santa, they direct all the traffic down these roads. So, so you never 
drive on this road and then suddenly hundreds of cars are doing it and it's it's kind of a mess and some people are going the wrong direction i'm going to show off to the right this is the big open parking lot and it's normally just mud look at how many buses once we once we get pack, past the church you'll be able to see in a little bit so many buses that have come in and are waiting for it to slow down so they can take people back out and a little tiny amusement park i've never been down to see like what they do but they set up like a little tiny amusement thing in there. This is the middle road of Las Bonitas that we're driving through. So if you're looking at a map or you're looking at my walking tours that I've done in the past, this is the middle road that has one or two things for sale over there on the left. That one, for example, it's an empty lot, but it does have a wall. Uh, but we've looked at that one years ago and it's a bit of money and not a great spot. This weird dome house actually had someone in it for Samana Santa. That never happens. We were really surprised. Someone put up a gate and actually rented it out. This pulperia right here though, this has been open the whole time we've lived here. It's gone now. Um, that they didn't bother to be open for Samana Santa. Again, really telling of just how little faith people have that just bothering to stay open through this busiest weekend of the year, not worth it. On the left is the house that we bought and then gave up because they tried to scam us um, on the deal, selling us only half the property that they had promised. And then this is us coming back to the road. The Simple Beach is over there on the left. You can't see it. Uh, we're, we're just past Playa Roca and we're turning northbound again to go through the two-way portion of the road. And uh, we're going to head back out through town. And we're actually going to do a drive through town that I don't actually remember having ever filmed. So I think we're, we may actually see a little bit of new stuff. That's Caracolitos on the right. Um, and then mostly, again, this stretch, pretty much all private houses. So some of these are available for rent, either long term or just for weekends. Um, it, they do tend to be a little bit on the expensive side because it is a desirable area to be in. And there's a lot that just aren't available. That lot that we just passed on the right is a Hail Mary lot. They're asking something like eight times market price and they will not even discuss budging. So it's been for sale for years and no one takes them seriously. The houses we're passing right now on the right are available for rent. Um, I, we've known people uh, who've done like annual rentals there. Uh, this hotel on the right, kind of nice, but the prices are through the roof um, and we never really see people there. Uh, back to private houses. The church that is here appears to have closed, which is weird. You don't normally expect a, a Catholic church to close. We skipped a little bit. We're back to the public beach, uh, we're making our way past all the cars. Lots of traffic at the public beach because a lot of people stopping for food, a lot of people just looking and seeing if they want to go out there. Paul has a Coke as he drives there in the car. Uh, a lot of people just park in the public beach. It's a bit of a mess. This is um, uh, Herenia Beach. That restaurant on the left, very popular place for lower cost seafood. Um, not bad. Uh, this is the place on the right that is closed. That is giant, such a huge venue, and there's just nothing there. All boarded up, not a single person in there. It, there's, some of the people that work there are just sitting there. Um, they're like guards, but there's nobody eating. Anyway, Arena Beach uh, is where, with Melvin and his wife, uh, Paul and I came more than two years ago as we shopped. All right, we came up to the shrimp place, turned right, and that's this road. On the left is the baseball diamond in the main part of the village. So this is heading roughly northeast on the dirt road going right through the middle of the village. And so this is the part I don't think I've ever shown before. Definitely not from a car. I've only driven this maybe one other time before, but I've walked it a bit, but not normally with a camera. But I used to walk the dogs down here quite often. So there's little pulperias like that one on the left dotted through. This is the village where the majority of the people who work on the beach live. There's another small village that we kind of drove through when we were on the middle road that's a little bit behind that that I've shown a bit. Um, this one is larger and I've shown it less because it's farther away. But a lot of our staff live here. Um, Oliver the dog lives just off to the left. He lives right against the baseball diamond. Um, that's the, the little puppy that we rescued. He had been hit by the car and had a broken leg and we took him in when he was just, he fit in the palm of my hand. And now he's a big dog and lives in this area. Um, this is uh, truly the barrio, uh, but it also has some interesting spots like this house right now on the right is actually a beautiful outside wall. It could be it could be somewhere in Greece or Spain. I have no idea what's inside the wall, but the outside of it is gorgeous mixed into the barrio. And that's just Nicaragua and its bizarre mix of things that you get uh, from time to time always 
always just incredibly wild. And this is Nicaragua 14 that we're coming back out to. That's the bus stop you see as you as you enter Las Benitas and Ponaloya, and uh, you just work your way past here, enter the road again, and we'll be heading uh, east back into Leon. We're not going to show that; just showing you getting out of town so you can see uh, where we are. But uh, that was it. That's driving through the town. There's a little bit left on the on the right. That was a strange way to say that. A uh, few businesses, um, a couple little houses. So this is kind of a lingering continuation of the village, but it drops off really quickly. And just all pasture land on the left. Uh, and that's that is Las Bonitas. That is what we have to see. Now I did grab a little bit of video uh, extra of just. Um, me walking on the road uh, and showing some of the traffic this morning of what was going on in town and uh, uh, just wanted to show what a beautiful day it was and and there's this this hilarious um, just everyone working their way down the road uh, so this is Nicaragua 14 heading towards the beach early in the morning before I filmed when we we're out with the uh, the river and I saw the uh, this cart come by after this guy on the on the bicycle, and this woman wanted to get a ride, so she ended up hopping on top of what is basically the ice cream box or whatever, and just rides that down the road. You can see her get on here in just a second, and I just found this very entertaining, and so decided to show you guys what walking down the road was like on Samana Santa. There she is. She's done with walking. Push me down the road. That poor guy bicycling. This is the cactus shop that we're going past, and this weird completely empty building that's supposed to be a model home for a development complex that uh, never ended up existing. Um, totally, totally weird stuff there. And that is uh, that is what you get uh, when you're in Nicaragua uh, and they start building things when there's no buyers yet. You just... It, it, it's very frustrating that they, that they make these allotments and just never end up doing anything with them. It's very depressing. All right, and I did come across this uh, well while I was out doing some searching, and I just wanted to show it real quickly that uh, discovered this interesting little spot out in a field. Who knows how long this well has been hiding out there. This is a real well, and you can tell they used to have the, the bar would go across, and you'd lower the bucket down, and there it is, just in a field. Yep, and it went way down, and then this is where you'd, you'd put the water for the animals and stuff, uh, and that's it. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you like to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee. And as always, uh, share on social media. And I will see all of you tomorrow.